Finding Nemo is directed by Andrew Stanton, co-written by him, Bob Peterson, and David Reynolds, and features the voices of Albert Brooks, Ellen DeGeneres, Alexander Gold, and Willem Dafoe, among a lot of other people. And in Finding Nemo, Marlin, voiced by Albert Brooks, is a clownfish who goes on a desperate quest to find and rescue his son, Nemo, voiced by uh, Alexander Gold, after he is taken by deep-sea divers. And along the way, he bumps into a Pacific regal blue tang named Dory, voiced by Ellen DeGeneres, who suffers from short-term memory loss. Meanwhile, Nemo finds himself in the fish tank of an Australian dentist, where the other fish in there, led by a Moorish idol named Gil, voiced by Willem Dafoe, plan to break him free. Now, I am obviously reviewing this movie because Finding Dory comes out here in the Philippines tomorrow, and I am super excited because Finding Nemo is one of my favorite Pixar movies of all time, which is kind of weird to say because like half of Pixar's repertoire is like are some of my favorite animated movies of all time anyway, but for me, Finding Nemo really is a movie that gets every single thing right. Just the technical package as a whole uh, on display is incredible. The voice cast in this movie is perfect and the writing is hilarious and just very, very heartfelt. Now, I wanna make that very, very clear. I don't like Pixar movies just because they're popular or just because they're CG animated and they're American and stuff. I like Pixar movies the best among like all these other animated movies because I think they have the best writing out there. And rewatching this movie for this review, I noticed that the plot in Finding Nemo moves a lot faster than I remember, you know? Like Dory and uh, Marlin literally just kind of bump into each other at the beginning, and then they're off on their adventure, and then they meet the sharks really fast, and from then on, it just never stops. But it works for this kind of story because what Finding Nemo is, is it's an adventure. It's an odyssey with no real villains. It's really just like an adventure with Marlin and Dory, while on the other hand, you have like a prison break type of movie uh, with Nemo um, and both of these arcs aren't necessarily original especially with Pixar but again it works so well in this movie because both of these arcs feel inextricable from each other they really feel like they mesh well and they belong in uh, one larger narrative. They are in a way sort of like both coming-of-age stories. I don't know if that's the most accurate term, but of course Nemo has to learn to be more independent and sort of overcome his disability while Marlin has to accept the fact that his son is coming of age. And the reason why this story is just so fun to watch and so engaging is because every single character here is so endearing and so unique because they're nothing like what we expect them to be. There, you know, there are so, so certain stereotypes that we associate with uh, these different animals, and all of these characters, most of these characters, really aren't anything like those stereotypes. And I think this ties in with the theme of the ocean just being so vast because you know Marlin is terrified of the ocean because he thinks it's dangerous, and the movie shows that it is dangerous, but at the same time, it's full of so much surprise and wonder and joy. Um, and obviously this movie tries to make a parallel between the ocean and our world and I think it works pretty well. But there's just so much clever dialogue and really quick jokes hidden in that dialogue that makes this movie so consistently funny from start to finish but at the same time it's very very heartfelt. The heart in this movie is so big and it is in my opinion like Pixar's ultimate statement about fatherhood and acceptance. The voice actors in this movie are one of the main reasons why all of this works so well. To me it really is a perfect marriage between between material and actors. I realized while rewatching this movie that Albert Brooks as Marlin, he kind of shouts throughout the entire movie because he's very exasperated and scared throughout the entire thing, but for good reason. But at the same time, he never lets you forget that he's doing this all for his son. He's doing all of these things out of love. He's just a tiny fish taking on the world. And say what you will, again, about uh, Ellen DeGeneres being annoying as Dory, I thought she was hysterical, and her performance is actually pretty dynamic for someone who kind of repeats dialogue uh, throughout the movie. There are moments when Dory becomes very heartfelt as well, and these moments really, really hit. I don't know how old Alexander Gold was when he voiced Nemo, but he's incredible as well, especially for a child actor. Uh, he is also very scared throughout the movie, but there's this determination about him as well. And it's just so fun hearing Willem Dafoe having fun as Gil. He's definitely having a ton of fun with this material, but at the same time, he's still able to show off Gil's more vulnerable side. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, no pun intended, of the voice cast here. Uh, director Andrew Stanton plays uh, Crush, the turtle in this movie, and he's great. Um, Barry Humphreys plays Bruce, the main shark. He's great as well. Jeffrey Rush plays Nigel, and he is also very memorable. And Bob Peterson is Mr. Ray. I, like, always had kind of a soft spot for him. Now, the unique challenge and opportunity that Andrew Stanton had here as a director, which he pulled off with flying colors, 
was uh, to keep the ocean feeling vast while keeping the main story intimate and personal. He knows exactly when to highlight either side. And given the setting, it's just really fun to watch Andrew Stanton have fun with the placement of his camera because, you know, it's the ocean and there's no stable ground. Even in uh, Nemo's arc, even if it takes place mostly just in that fish tank, um, he still has a ton of freedom with his camera. And you really feel the effect of this kind of free camera when Marlin and Dory get lost or when something uh, stops them in their journey towards Nemo because you feel lost with them and you feel Marlin's anguish at being, you know, pulled back again from his son. And Pixar directors really are some of the best in the business at balancing tone. They really know how to marry comedy with drama and never make it feel like one is overriding the other. As a result, the tone of Finding Nemo is very sentimental, but it's all completely earned. It's not hammy in any way. And like I said, the technical package in Finding Nemo as a whole is just incredible. And after 13 years, this movie still looks absolutely beautiful. It is, in my opinion, the first Pixar movie to really uh, give a special focus on setting. It's almost like a tribute to the sea, and it really, really works. It's one of the most colorful Pixar movies out there. Every single coral reef and every single fish uh, just, you know, pops with color. And the way they kind of adjust the, the, the shade of blue, the deeper you go into the ocean, is it's just that, that attention to detail is staggering. And when the screen is full of all these different things happening, it'll take you so many rewatches to get every single detail. And I think it's really cool that all the fish seem to be designed uh, based on their personalities in addition to being designed based on like how the fish look like in real life, so I thought that was cool. The sound in this movie is amazing as well. Every single sonic detail is is captured perfectly from the singing of the whales to the buzz of the jellyfish tentacles and the anemones. And this is something I only noticed while rewatching the movie, but all throughout the movie, as these fish swim through the ocean, you know, every single subtle movement in the water makes a ripple effect and there's a sound that comes with that, and you hear that all throughout the movie. And here's where I get to talk about one of my favorite aspects of Finding Nemo. And the thing is, every Pixar movie has kind of a unique tone to it, and that's largely thanks to the music. And Thomas Newman's score for Finding Nemo is one of my favorite soundtracks to any Pixar movie. I will admit and I will say proudly that rewatching this movie, I cried three times. And you know, when I watched it back then and every single time I rewatched it, I never cried. But for some reason, now in my age, I'm not that old, but um, now um, I just, it really got me. And that's largely thanks to Thomas Newman's music, especially during the opening scene. The opening scene to Finding Nemo is so heartbreaking and so sad. Um, I just can't describe the mood that uh, Thomas Newman's music puts me in, especially in that opening scene. Like, it really, it's just so delicate, but at the same time, it's filled with so much wonder. It is literally the music that comes to my mind when I imagine a father holding his newborn son. It's amazing. Also, the song that plays during the credits, Beyond the Sea, is a great song. It's really happy. I mean, even the editing in this movie is great. The editing is by David Ian Salter, and it's thanks to him that the movie feels like it's always moving along. And it's really a perfect example of how to splice together two different arcs that are happening in completely separate places, you know, because the tempo of both of these adventures are even, so the tone doesn't shift when you jump from one arc to the other. And when the arcs do eventually cross, it really feels like a real culmination, like you really earned this. And I have to bring up maybe my favorite scene in the whole movie, light spoilers, but it's when Marlin's story begins to travel throughout the ocean and how that's conveyed through editing always just makes me emotional for some reason because it highlights, to me at least, the beauty of storytelling, the fact that all these different fish, all these different people um, of from different walks of life are, you know, relating to just this story about a father's love for his son, and I think that's that's gorgeous. I think Finding Nemo is an amazing movie. I know there are some people out there who still haven't seen it. Don't be ashamed. Go out and check it out. It's really, really worth your time, and I really hope, I'm crossing my fingers, that Finding Dory is good as well. We will see tomorrow. All right, so those are my thoughts on Finding Nemo. Have you guys seen it? What do you think about it? Whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.